Lord. And here's something else that the Lord said to me. So the first thing I was telling you is that the Lord said that he's going to be dealing with drug addiction tonight. Amen. The other thing that the Lord said is, I heard the angels of the Lord say, finally, we can start. Amen. And the Lord said, the, Al Alabama is hungry. Amen. Then I had another angel say, Al Alabama is ready. Yes. And I said, glory to God, mm -hmm. you know, and so revival can actually begin. Amen. And this tells me that there's been a group of prayer warriors in this place. Yeah. Amen. There's been people praying and saying, come Lord Jesus. Because mm -hmm. for the Lord to do that in any place, because normally when I go to places to minister, it's normally like a culture shock thing. People are, and they kind of have to acclimatize to the whole dimension of thinking. Mm -hmm. But here, people are hungry for God. Amen. And the glory of God is in this place. Amen. And indeed, even as our sister um, prophesied earlier on, she said, this is a night of shifting. Amen. Here's what else the Lord said to me. I had to check the date. The Lord said, check the date. And today is the 8th of June. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, June is the sixth month in the Gregorian calendar. Mm -hmm. Six is the number of self. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Amen. Then the Lord told me, I want you to go over to Luke chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2. And I want you to read the story of John. I was here as the Lord was speaking. So the Lord said, go to the story of, story of John. And I went and had a look at how John was born and everything. And it says that on the eighth day, he was being circumcised. And Zacharias, because he had doubted God, he wasn't so sure. He was like, you know, he was a blameless man. Isn't it amazing that both of them were blameless? Both Zacharias and Elizabeth, I've never seen that before. But tonight the Lord just opened my eyes and I saw it. That both Zacharias and Elizabeth were blameless before God. Amen. They feared the Lord. Amen. They obeyed his every command. Mm. They were so deliberate. Mm. They were basically fertile soil Amen. to usher in the glory of God. Amen. And and then it says that when, when Elizabeth was, um, let's just see if we can go there. When Elizabeth was called, um, I was, uh, there we go, straight there. I love it when the angels of the Lord are helping with ministry. Go bam, right there. So this is um, from uh, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 59. And so it was on the eighth day, okay? Today is the eighth day, right? Right. And so it was that on the eighth day, that they came to circumcise the child. Is circumcision painful or not? Yes, it is. It hurts. It hurts. So there's going to be some, some, some circumcision happening tonight. And that part is not nice, you know. That's right. But then it bats something new. And they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. That's the name they were going to give him, according to uh, Jewish tradition. His mother answered and said, no, he shall be called John. Mm -hmm. But they said to her, there is no one amongst you rel your relatives who is called by this name. Mm -hmm. Shall I add, foolish woman, shut up. Mm -hmm. So they made signs to his father what he would have called him. Mm -hmm. And he asked for a writing tablet and he wrote saying, his name is John. Mm -hmm. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was opened. And his tongue was loosed, mm. and he spoke, praising God. Mm. Then fear came on all who dwelt among them. Mm. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all of the hill co country of Judea. Mm. And all those who heard, heard them, kept them in their hearts, saying, what kind of child will this be? Amen. And the hand of the Lord was with him. Amen. This is the way, the way the way of the Lord was ushered in, in such a miraculous manner. And you know, just a little while earlier, um, you see, um, let's just go over there to uh, Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 19. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. Amen. I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. Amen. And I was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place. Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. Why did God have to shut him up? Because he was going to nullify what God had spoken. That's right. And that's what a lot of us are doing today. Mm. Yes. The word of prophecy is spoken. The word of life comes upon you. Mm. And sometimes God has to mute you. Others, you're going to just be nullifying. Mm. And this is the thing about the kingdom with no end. Mm. A man had to be shut up. Because this word was not going to fall to the ground and die. Yes. 
That's right. It had happened many times over before, mm. but this particular time was going to be different yeah. because God was preparing a little baby called Jesus. Yeah. You know, and I love this song that says, uh, that calls Jesus' name, a beautiful name by Hillsong, mm. that says that Jesus could not bear heaven without us. And so he brought heaven down. Isn't Amen. that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Mm. And as a result of Jesus coming, his kingdom shall have no end. Amen. So many have come and tried to destroy this kingdom. Mm. How many have tried? How many things have come? How many new age things have been brought? Mm. And the Lord says, mm, 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 no, 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 no. My kingdom shall not come to an end. Amen. And he looks around and says, well, Lord Jesus, it's just about your time to come back on earth. Mm. And this happened some years ago in 2013. I was out at a prayer mountain, a retreat center, and I was calling on the name of the Lord. And it's one of those retreat centers. I like to make fun about it. It's one of the coldest, actually, it's the coldest place in Kenya. You know, which is nothing like, you know, here. You know. <laughs> of course, you know. Yeah, I feel really cold at 70 degrees Celsius, so you have an idea. It's probably at about 60. I doubt that it gets to 60. But anyway, it's really cold to us. And I was outside. I like going to this particular prayer mountain because at about 2 or 3 a.m., something amazing happens. Amen. Instead of falling asleep, the cold falls on you so heavy that you're calling on the name of Jesus so that he can come quickly and tell you why he sent you there so that you can go and sleep. You know, so you're really <laughs> desperate for the Lord. And something amazing happens when you're desperate for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Ask the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years of bleeding. And she was desperate. And when she heard about Jesus, she didn't care. She wrapped herself and she pressed through the crowd. She pressed through the people. If they had recognized her, they would have stoned her for daring to come to a place where there was preaching, where there was ministry. And yet she had an issue of blood. That's Women with an issue of blood were not allowed in the temple. Women with an issue of blood were not even allowed to pray. Mm -hmm. So she was supposed to have spent 12 prayerless years. Mm -hmm. And enough was enough. If she was married, she was going to have lost her husband. Which husband is going to wait for 12 years? <laughs> really, the spirit of the living God has got to be upon them. For them to wait for that long for intimacy. You know, I mean, obviously, there must have been a smell or something. Because 12 years is a long time. And they didn't have the kind of sanitary towers that we have today. So can you imagine what she was living with? Mm. And the Bible tells us she had spent all her money. That's right. So she was desperate. So there's something about desperation. So I'm in this prayer mountain. And I'm desperate because it's getting really, really cold. And by that time, I hadn't learned about layering. I learned about layering when I started traveling outside the country to degrees that are lower than Kenyan degrees, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Australia and, it, you know, I just posted, by the way, it was this time last year because mm -hmm. I saw it yesterday as a, you know, on this day. I love that on this day thing on Facebook. So it said yesterday, on this day, last year, you know, and I just written four degrees. And my four degrees is Celsius, okay, because mm -hmm. we don't do Fahrenheit. So I don't know what that is in, in Fahrenheit, but that's all I wrote. I was that cold. I was like, I'm dying. I'm dying. God, you've got to come with warmth and minister to me. This is ridiculous. Anyway, so, um, you know, so, so it was getting really, really, really cold. I imagine it was probably at around 10 degrees Celsius in that place. It doesn't get to 4 degrees in Kenya. That was my first time at 4 degrees. And of course, all the Africans were coming out to say, oh, my sister, the Lord minister to you right now. Take shelter. You're going to die, sister. You know, because we're in tropical countries, you know. So anyway, um, as I was waiting upon the Lord and just calling on him, and I was really, really desperate, suddenly I saw a vision, and I was taken up into heaven. And, you know, I believe that heaven is, being taken into heaven is not a, a, a different thing for us. Mm. Because the Bible says that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of times when you say I was taken up into heaven, people are like, whoa. No, it's for every child of God, because it's our natural position. Mm -hmm. That's where we're seated. And the Bible tells us in Philippians 3.20 that uh, we are citizens of heaven. Mm -hmm. And it says that from that position, that position of heaven, mm -hmm. we await the return of our Messiah. Amen. So, you know, let's, uh, one of the things that the Lord wants to deal with tonight is that thing about thinking about things and lifting up people who are actually just living what God has called every believer to be. So being taken into heaven should be part of your natural. Mm. Should be part of your thing. You know you know what God's going to do. Because he does nothing without speaking to his servants, the prophets. Amen. Amos 3, 7. And so the Lord took me up into heaven. And you know when he does this, you will normally know the protocol. Because somehow he'll just put it in you. So you know whether to be still. You know whether to start asking questions. You know whether to begin, woo! <laughs> or you know whether to begin to just say, I worship you, Lord. Somehow you just know. Because it's also our natural place. Mm. So I'm, I'm in heaven and the Lord just, you know, the, the Holy Spirit just ministers to me and says, be still. Mm. So I'm just quietly there. 
and I'm watching activity, a lot of activity happening. There's a whole movement of angels, and I can see where the Father is sitting, and, and, and you know, and then Jesus is sitting at a different place, and an angel suddenly, uh, you know, rises and comes forward, and he takes this little golden trumpet and puts it to his lips. It was actually very small, and put it to his lips, and he was just about to blow it. Mm. Then Jesus, from where he was, I understood at that point that Jesus was not sitting on the right hand side of the Father at that moment because he he was rising and taking his place. Mm. Then he said something that I didn't hear, and then he the Father told him, Come. And he went over to the Father and they began to speak. I couldn't hear what he was saying. And then all of a sudden, I, I was asking the Holy Spirit, What what's going on? What's going on? And the Holy Spirit says, Listen. Then I paid attention, and then all of a sudden I heard Jesus saying, It's too soon. They are not ready. If you blow the trumpet now, less than 5% of the Christians will come home now. And I began to weep. I started asking God, I don't even know if I want to ask you from one of the 5%, Lord. And I started asking the Lord, this was 2013. I started asking the Lord, what is it? How is this possible? Less than 5%? What is it, Lord? What is it, Lord? And then, I turned and Jesus turned and said, go and tell them. And I knew I needed to preach and time was short. Mm. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. Even as he sent me to America, it's part of the preparation for the return of the Messiah. Mm. It's part of building up more than 5%. Remember the word of God that asks, when the Son of Man returns, mm. will he find faith on the earth? Mm. And our answer is what? Yes, yes. he will. God, I will ensure mm. that when the Son of Man returns, mm. he will find faith on the earth. Yeah. I will be faithful. Yeah. And the Lord is asking tonight, will you choose to be faithful? Mm -hmm. And that's how the kingdom of God will have no end. Yeah. As the word of God goes out with fire mm. and ministers to somebody who at this moment begins to realize, I think I've allowed my fire to go cold. There was a time that I was excited. And it's one of the things that God does when I minister. People begin to think, I was once on fire. What happened to me? I was once excited about the Lord. What happened to me? When did I grow cold? When did I stop dancing? When did I stop praying as I used to? When did I stop looking up to the Lord? When did I stop hoping? Mm -hmm. And that's the fire of the spirit of the living God mm -hmm. that is raising up person after person. Mm -hmm. And we're just being prepared for the end time return of the Lord. Amen. Why is America so important? America ministers to the rest of the world. Mm. When the Lord sent me to Virginia, because Virginia was part of the trail that the Lord has sent me to, I didn't know why he was sending me there. But as I got there, the Lord told me, this is the seat of government. Not just government in USA, but government to the world. And that night, I was dealing with demons of uh, basically wizards and witches all over outside my room. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me, I picked the home I was going to bring you to. Because if I brought you to a home where they don't worship the Lord, you would be killed tonight. Mm -hmm. You would be killed. And I, I was woken up by the Lord just about midnight. And I could hear voices outside my door. Mm -hmm. Anger, rage and everything. And the Lord said, don't open the curtain. Because if you open the curtain, you will see them. Because they have come. Physically, they've been flying everywhere. They know you're here. Mm -hmm. They know your mission. And they're here to abort. And the Lord told me it shall not be aborted. Amen. And at the same time, as I was just entering into prayer and just asking the Lord, and there was so much intimidation, by the way. The cat in the house was also going crazy. It sounded <laughs> like he was speaking in tongues just under the door. And he was scratching and scratching. And I could hear what he was saying. And he was saying, open the door, open the door, open the door. And the Lord told me, you are safe. Don't be afraid. And as, we, as I began to pray and call on the name of the Lord, the Lord began to show me that these are the same demons over time, over many generations, that tried to kill Moses, that tried to kill Jesus, mm -hmm. that tried to kill Elijah. Mm -hmm. The same, same demons. They just are trying to change themselves in different names and different forms mm -hmm. in every generation. Mm -hmm. And on this particular night, the Lord told me, you're dealing with the demons of Freemasonry. <coughs> and the Lord told me, in a lot of cases, people think that there are good big boys club. And the Lord began to explain to me, do you not understand that Freemasonry is the organized government of Lucifer yeah. that counters the government of God? And so they are the ones that will come and counter you. And the Lord told me, if you go to Los Angeles, you will deal with an organized government called Illuminati. So here in Virginia, you are dealing with 
you know, Freemasonry. And then I remember the next morning, oh, oh, by the way, one of the things that happened is that just about that time, someone was driving my car and she was parking it. And she says that the car jumped off her hands mm. and rammed into a wall. A Mercedes Benz rammed into a wall and until the front, the whole front panel just fell off. Can you imagine that kind of impact? Mm. And she says she was parking it and the car just flew out of her hands. And she's one of my pastors, so I believe her when she says that. And I know it's just demons trying to shake me up, trying to scare me, trying to say, oh, you left your job in December. How are you going to repair this car? You had bought it knowing that you have this income and everything. And basically the demons were just really, really trying to dishearten me and scare me. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that night, I felt like I should park and leave America. I actually thought, what am I doing here? And the Lord told me, when you are afraid, I am still your strength. Mm -hmm. When you are weak, my strength is made perfect in me. Amen. And the Lord told me, I never use those who are qualified because they will boast in their own strength. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me, because you don't know what to do, that's why I wanted you, because then you'll be a vessel. Mm -hmm. You'll not be a brain, you'll not be a heart, you'll be a vessel that mm -hmm. just moves, that I can come into mm -hmm. and move according to what I want, because you have no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's how precious America is. And in the next few days, I was just interceding from that place and praying for government. And one of the things I began to understand is why Donald Trump? Because in a lot of ways, you know, when it comes to things like, you know, he's a brilliant businessman. When it comes to leading a nation mm -hmm. and it comes to being a president, he is a lot like me in the ministry field. He mm -hmm. doesn't know what to do. But as long as we keep praying for him, mm -hmm. then he will keep on declaring things like, why are you Christians so afraid? Do you ever listen to that man speak? And you think, you're not even saved. Why are you telling us this? You know, you're not even born again. But he makes a lot of sense. Mm. He says Christians are cowards. You hold solutions and yet you're cowards. And you have allowed people to say happy holidays and it's Merry Christmas. Say it. You know, and you're like, whoa. And one of the things that the Lord said to me is that he's used this man. And I know I might be offending some people depending on which side you're on. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, one of the things I do is that I prophesy what the Lord says. In my nation, by the way, don't worry. The demon that comes to fight the word of God is always the same. It comes in different forms and shapes. Sometimes it comes in the form of racism. And sometimes it comes in the form of tribalism. Mm -hmm. So last year, and really from 2016, right after finishing, actually I was doing Kenya and US at the same time. Because for 18 months I was worrying for my nation and being insulted. Mm -hmm. Because my skin color betrays me. Apparently I come from the president's side based on my skin color. And I was being called all sorts of things including private parts as I was prophesying but here's the thing about the Lord mm. he doesn't look for consensus nope. mm. he's not looking for your opinion mm -hmm. he's not an opinion poor guy mm -hmm. he's gonna be God and he's gonna do what he wants to do mm -hmm. and he has decided this is the person he's gonna use for this nation mm -hmm. and the Lord told me this is a Cyrus rebuilding the walls of this nation Amen. and the Lord said to me as I was praying for the government in, in uh, Virginia the Lord began to say to me I have given America a new light lease of life. Mm. Tell the Christians they have a limited window mm. to restore Christianity into every area mm. with the support of the presidency. Amen. Mm. And that's really critical. And tonight, part of what the Lord was saying to me as well is, and I'm just releasing the things the Lord has said to me, that you guys have to pick them up and run with them. Mm. Take the prophetic, run it, run with it, and birth it. Amen. Birth it. Don't be like Zacharias, who had to be muted by the Lord until the word of prophecy came. And yet the Lord had to mute him because once John had been born, did you see the kind of things that John went through? Mm -hmm. Did you see how he died? Mm -hmm. You know what? They had to know that it's God. Mm -hmm. They had to know that it's God. And the Lord preferred that they would doubt at the beginning that doubt when it was most critical and how, you know, he would have had his parents telling him, stop it, stop preaching, you're gonna get into trouble, stop it, you're gonna get killed, stop it, you're too loud, stop it, stop baptizing, stop this thing about Jesus, who are you talking about that's, that's got sandals, what's wrong with you, what's wrong with your hair and everything, and they just let him be, they let him serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. I've been in trouble with my family since I went online and began to preach, and they're very concerned for my life, and really they should be, because, you know, I say things that um, if only if, if God hadn't told me, then I'll be killed for sure. <laughs> so um, the Lord is saying tonight that the Lord wants to give new beginnings to each and every one of you that is hearing this message. Amen. Sorry, my nose runs when I preach. 
because I'm moved with emotion and tears and everything. It's one of the things that happens. And the Lord is saying to me, you know, he was saying to me a little earlier, he was saying to me, and I felt a little sad when I saw a mama having to leave with her children because this word was for moms. The Lord was saying to me that a number of you have situations with your children. And he says that he's giving you the power to pray your children into life. Amen. And the Lord was speaking about Ezekiel 37. And he told me a number of people here have a valley of dry bones, mm. dead bones, death in their homes. Death has come in. And you've been praying for your children. You've been praying for your spouses. You've been praying for your homes. You've been praying for your neighborhood. And the Lord is saying that tonight you're going to receive the power of prayer. Amen. Because there's a level of prayer that you need to have mm -hmm. for the value of dry bones to come to life. Amen. Remember the discussion between Ezekiel and God? Mm -hmm. can, this, can these bones live? Mm -hmm. And he was a wise guy. He said, you know all things, Lord. He didn't That's know what fine. to say. You know, mm -hmm. like, Just in case I say the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, he said, you know all things, Lord. Mm -hmm. What was that? That was prayer. Mm -hmm. When God speaks to you and you're speaking to God, you're praying. Mm -hmm. And so it's only through prayer that the glory of God descends upon a nation, mm -hmm. descends upon a home, mm -hmm. descends upon an entire neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Only through prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer births things. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has sent me here tonight to speak a message of revival. Mm -hmm. And revival is about prayer. Mm -hmm. Revival is about taking back your place. Mm -hmm. Revival is about returning to what really matters. Mm -hmm. The things of eternity. Mm -hmm. We might be running around and using all our strength to take care of this physical body. But the Lord says that he is our provider. Mm -hmm. The Lord says that if need be he will cause the sun to stand still so that you're not worried about your shifts. You're not worried about your time at work. The Lord's going to give you the time to pray and the strength to pray and the power to pray and the Lord's going to begin to do a new thing. I As I was coming here, Jesus. our sister began to say, oh, I wanted to put a balloon there because that turn is difficult to find. And somehow I couldn't stop but think about that. And when I got here, I, look at, I looked at this church and I was very excited. Why? It's so humble. It's so simple. And the Lord loves humble and simple places. Yes. That's why Jesus was born in a mansion. Mm -hmm. And the Lord sends me, excuse me, to very simple congregations. Where people are not caught up on, you know, uh, offerings. Not caught up on, you know, the sound and the programs and everything. But people are worshipping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. And in this place, I began to see cars turning. Cars turning and finding their way here. Mm -hmm. I began to see cameramen. Coming to find out what is this little church? What is this little church? What is this little church? That's what the Lord told me. And the Lord told me it has begun tonight. Amen. A revival has fallen in this place. Amen. I began to see the lame walking. I began to see the blind seeing. I began to see things happening in this place. Yes. And the Lord told me, I have told you to restrain yourself in every place you have spoken. But tonight, release my glory. Amen. That's what the Lord told me. That's what the Lord told me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shakaya rasotorobo shere Rako shaka kate te 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 te. I want you to just begin to receive from the Lord right now. Rante ke te 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 te. Just say, Lord, I receive your word. I receive everything you are saying to me, Lord. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Just begin to receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, I feel miracles. Somebody's been touched by the Lord right now. I've just felt it in my spirit. There's someone who needs a miracle, and I've just felt it right now. A quick name of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord said He's healing people tonight. He's healing people tonight. He's healing people tonight. Oh, there it is. Healing, healing, healing. Hallelujah. Just begin to receive it. Begin to receive it. You know, some of you are a little confused. You're like, what's going on? You know, revival is not very ordinary. Revival is not very dignified. If you're just looking around, you came as a spectator, then you're going to get really shocked. But please, the Lord has said he wants to deposit this in you first. In you first. Amen. Yes, that's the glory of God. That's the glory of God on you, brother. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your anointing in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The bones are coming to life. The bones are coming to life. I see the bones moving. I can hear rattling. I can hear rattling in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. I can hear rattling in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Woo! 
touch the leg. The shoulder bone is finding the elbow. The arm is finding the fingers. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll prophesy. I'll prophesy. I'll prophesy. Just receive it. Just receive it. You're wondering what to do. You're wondering where to look. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Just release your spirit. Release your spirit to the Lord. Just release your spirit to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I laid hands on a cousin of mine. Thank you. She's been Catholic. And she got saved in um, in uh, Georgia. And as I laid hands on her, she went down under the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And later she told me, I used to see people falling and I'd wonder, why do they fall? Yes. That's the spirit of the living God. Amen. Allow him to keep ministering. He'll continue to minister. He'll continue to minister. Some of you, maybe you've never felt the glory of God. There's a 1995 that I went into a church. I've been born again three years with some backsliding in between. And I went into that sanctuary and I said, Lord, I never want to doubt that you're present. Mm. If you say that prayer from your heart, the Lord will do it. And I walked into that sanctuary and the sanctuary was full of an electric current. That's the glory of God. From that day on, henceforth, I have never doubted it. If you need a miracle from the Lord, if you need a release of something from the Lord, just just receive it. Just receive it. Yes. As a minister, just receive it. Just receive it. Don't get distracted. And if the Lord is moving, just let the Lord move. Let the Lord move. Let the Lord move. Let the weight of his glory fall on you. Let the weight of the Lord's glory come upon you. The only thing that can limit him tonight is you. The only thing that can limit him tonight is you. So if you have any unconfessed sin, just repent before the Lord. Repent before the Lord and tell him, Lord, I want this to be a new beginning for me tonight. Hallelujah. The lady in the wheelchair, I don't mean to embarrass you, but the Lord is saying that tonight is your night. Just believe it. Just believe it. Just believe it. Begin to speak to that wheelchair and say, Enough is enough. You've held me long enough. You've held me long enough. Just begin to declare it. If you're not born again, just release yourself to the Lord. I see you walking already. Hallelujah. Yes, I see it already. I see it already. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is not a liar. He's not a liar. He's not a liar. And he doesn't dangle something so that you can feel bad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just releasing the glory of God in this place. Oh, Father, saturate this place with your glory. Saturate this place with your presence. Father God, time doesn't exist, oh God. We're not looking out to our watches, oh Holy Spirit. We wait. We wait on you, we wait on you, Holy Spirit. We wait on you, we wait on you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Some of you have old age related illnesses. Some of you have been told you have old age related illnesses and you have believed it. Between you and your doctor, that thing has happened in heaven. Because whatever two agree on earth is agreed upon in heaven. I want you to repent for having agreed with that doctor. There is no such thing for a believer as an old age related illness. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. We grow older, we grow older, we grow older, and then at a rich right old age, we rest, we sleep, and we go to be with the Lord. That's how it goes. Not sickness. Sickness cannot take out a vessel of God. Yes. There's no sickness that can dwell in any vessel of the living God. There is no sickness. Sickness is a fallen nature. There is no place for sickness in the temple of the living God. If you have arthritis right now, the Lord is saying you are healed. You yes. are healed. Yes. You are healed. I want you to get up from where you are and begin to move whichever whichever area was hurting from arthritis. And I want you to just confirm it. If there's something you could not do, just stand up at any point and just begin to reach out. Begin to reach out. Begin to stretch out. By the way, I want you at any given time, if you have something like a backache, at any given time when you feel that your faith is full, just get up and say, it's my time. And I want you to begin to touch your toes, begin to stretch out, and begin to declare, it is done. And when it is done, begin to shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a night of miracles, by the way. It's a night of miracles. Somebody prophesied it earlier on, the lady who blew the shofar. She said, it's a night of miracles. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the heavy presence of the Spirit of the living God. I tell you, there's a song that says, the Holy Spirit's here and his power is real. Anything can happen and it probably will. Something very good, something good is going on around here. Let this be a church on fire. Just believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. And say, Lord Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus, it is done. Hallelujah. 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 I want people to begin to say hallelujah the moment it happens to you. By the anointing. By the anointing. 
anointing. By the anointing. By the anointing. Hallelujah. I command that pain. Get out of her. In the name of Jesus, it is done now. Help us stand up. Help us stand up. Help us stand up. I know the glory is heavy. But just help us stand up. Help us stand up. Honey, I need you to begin to touch your toes and get up. Touch your toes and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. And just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. There you go. It's happening. It's happening. I'm seeing things moving in your body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She's been healed. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord. Let's rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord's going to do it. Whether I touch you or not, the Lord's going to touch you himself. Tonight is a night of miracles. But if you have your phone closed and somebody was supposed to come in here, tell them you better make your way here in the name of Jesus. You better make your way here. Maybe somebody was a little lazy to come or something happened and they didn't come. The presence of the Lord is here. Lady in brown. Lady in brown. Are you having pain? Where? I want you to begin as you're coming here, just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm marching in the army of the Lord. Lift them up. Just say I'm marching. Just jump over her. Jump over her. Say in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Receive your impartation right now. In the name of Jesus. Just lift your legs up. Lift them high. You know, one of the things that comes against our healing is what we have believed. Especially through pain. You've been taught and conditioned by your body to believe if I lift my knee a little too high, it's going to hurt. But a child of God who knows that the Lord has touched them just defies all odds. Defies all odds. Come on, let's go, mama. Let's go. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Higher. Thank you for that for the soldier. I speak to those knees in the name of Jesus. Just get up, get up. I need more people to help me because I don't want people to fall under the anointing before the Lord has finished what he's doing. Lord, no, 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 no. Lord, new ligaments, new ligaments, new ligaments. Oh, my father, these are praying me. These are praying me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And it's people that the enemy has been using in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? She just. She really, she's a prayer warrior, this woman. She's a prayer warrior. Receive a new, fresh anointing. The devil's gonna regret having touched you. Never again, never again, never again. Healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, just give a moment to rest in the presence of the Lord. Then we're gonna confirm that the healing has come. The other thing I'm going to ask you to do tonight is don't lie to the Holy Spirit. Don't say the pain is not gone to avoid hurting my feelings. It's about Jesus. It's not about me. Yeah, I have nothing to lose. If nothing happens, it's the Lord's name. So the Lord will not embarrass his name. So don't worry about me. Yeah, don't lie to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The presence of the Lord is so heavy here. Somebody has a problem with their mind. Is it depression? Anyone here has an issue with the mind or depression? Could be memory loss as well. What is it? There's something. There's something to do with the mind. Anyone who has an issue with the mind, I know sometimes you feel embarrassed, but just lift up your hand in the presence of the Lord. There's no shame. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is healing you. The Lord is healing you. The Lord is healing you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have somebody at home with this condition, I want you to reach out your hand right now and believe that as you get home, the anointing on your hand will go upon that person in the name of Jesus. That is the glory of God. That is the glory of God. That is the glory of God. And you know what? If I were you, I'll lift my hand because you're going to encounter somebody at one time or another. And what we're depositing in you is an anointing to break sicknesses. It's already yours. Just receive it tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What's up, ma'am? Oh, okay. All right. So you just come. All right, you have been having, but it is God, sweetheart. It's God. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. All right. Okay. I need someone to just, two people to just be here. Oh, my God, my God, my God. You are a covenant-keeping God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
She has the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Yes. Right now, I come against that spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the fire of the living God come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. That demonic presence that has been speaking to your mind, that has been attacking you, afflicting you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command it to come out of you now. Come out of you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you born again, ma'am? I feel like you need to say the sinner's prayer again. All right? Are you ready to do that? Just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus. I thank you for your forgiveness, for your forgiveness. On, the cross. on the cross. I accept it. You accept it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Because the day, because the day that I met you, that, that I met you. On that day. On that day. Everything was finished. Everything was finished. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. For doubting you. For doubting you. And allowing, and allowing this word. This word. Depression. Depression. To manifest in my life. To manifest in my life. I reject it. I reject it. I renounce it. I renounce it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare. I declare that I have the mind of Jesus Christ. That I have the mind of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Right now. Like now, come into my life. Come into my life. Give me, Give me a, spirit of gladness a spirit of gladness in exchange, in exchange for the spirit of heaviness. For the spirit there of it heaviness. is. There is the glory of God right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I break every hold of the enemy now in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, I command you to let go of her mind mm. now. Yes. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it go. Yes. There you go. That discouragement. Yes. That hopelessness. Yes. You demon of suicide. I see you mm. in the name of Jesus. Mm. I speak the fire of God against you now. Mm. As I bind you and cast you mm. to the cross of Jesus Christ right now. Mm. Father, right now, change her sight, Lord. Yes. Cause her to see you in everything, Lord. Cause her to see herself the way you see her. Yes. I come against generational curses. Yes, in the name of that Jesus. That have pursued you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Those demons of generations gone by. Yes. Those demons of generations present in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare this is a vessel of the living God. Yes. I cut you off right now. Yes. And I break off those curses yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for your covenant. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, for your living altar. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, the fire of the Holy Spirit is upon you now. Thank you, Father, for your presence, your glory, your power. Fills this vessel now from her head to her toes, washing everything that doesn't glorify you, my Father. Let the fire of the living God in her be so heavy that there is no demon that can bear it, my Father, my God. Even in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. Spirit of the living God, thank you for that word. I'm seeing you rewriting in her mind. So many lies, so many lies, so many lies. Sister, the enemy has thrived on lies. Lies, lies, lies that you have believed, that have held you into bondage. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just declare right now, right, Lord. in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ I, renounce I renounce every lie. That Satan, that Satan has been using, has been using in, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, yes. I break every yoke of darkness in yes. the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. 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 By the fire of the Spirit of the living God, I break every yoke. I break yes. every yoke. I break yes. every yoke. Yes. I break every, every chain of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I see a small clinging of a demon in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, by the sword of the Spirit, I cut it off. Yes. I cut it off. Yes. I yes. cut it off. Yes. The demon that's laying hold on her right yes. now, I cut it off. Yes. Father, I minister to her ears right now. Yes. I declare, Lord, she will not hear demonic voices, my Father. Yes. She will hear the Spirit of the living God, declaring, this is the way, walk in it. Father, I thank you, O oh Lord God, for her heart. Yes. That has been broken, my Father, my God. I declare, Lord, she's not one heartbreak away from madness. Father God, no more heartbreak. You yes. are protecting her heart. Yes, Lord. You are giving her a new heart right yes. now. Yes. I declare she's Jesus nothing Christ. of what she was told she is. Yes. Oh, sister, the Lord says you are lovable. Amen. You are lovable. 
you thought that you cannot be loved. Shake it, 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 it. Oh, Father, give her friends that love her. Give her people that adore her. My Father, a new family, a new family of Christ. Oh, Rakai, Kando, Roko, Saya. Father, deal with the loneliness too, my Father, my God. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord says, I'm restoring. I'm restoring. I'm restoring. And you've come alive, even according to Ezekiel 37. In the name of Jesus, it is finished. In Jesus' name. Amen. I used to have depression and one of the things I've learned that fights things like depression is when you fast because it's demons they can't bear it they can't stand it and the other thing is praise they can't stand it you cannot be depressed while you're praising Amen. You cannot be depressed while you're praising. Ah. That's the other thing I've learned. Put on a garment of praise Amen. in exchange for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. That's what the word of God says. Isaiah 61, I think it is. Amen. That's what the Lord says. Amen. And that's what I've learned. To praise the Lord. To turn on worship and to lift up the name of the Lord. And to refuse every form of negativity. Yes. To refuse every association that is ungodly. Yes. To refuse anything. You know, there are things I don't watch. Like one of the things by the way I don't watch is the news. I don't watch the news. I say, God, you're more than able to get any news to me. That's right. Yeah, because I realize news is depressing. It's like there are demons in the news that are just telling you, you're dead, you're finished, you're done, you're doomed. Where is your God now? And I just don't do that. Yeah, I believe in listening to Heaven FM. So I say, well, they might say what they say, but this is what my Redeemer said this morning. So I don't know about that news. That's fake news, no matter what it is. And people are like, no, 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 they even have a recording for it. I'm like, I don't care. My Redeemer said, and he's not a liar. And one of the things that we have to learn as children of God mm -hmm. is to believe what God said. Amen. And how do you believe what God said if the thing that is not filling your mind is not the word of God? Mm. You've got to eat up the word of God. Amen. And then ask God to help you read the Bible in such a way that when you read it, it questions what you believed in. Mm. So if you read it and it says, you know, I'm the apple of God's ever loving eye. Ish, Lord, what? What? Apple of your ever loving eye? Mm. That would have to mean that, you know, mm -hmm. do you love me? No. <laughs> How full of your ever loving eye. You know, I love the scripture that says that, you know, he's, he's inscribed your, 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 your name on his hand. So I'm like, God, you're always working. And of course, you use your hands when you work. And I'm like, so every time God says, let it be, he sees my hand. I'm like, Catherine, Catherine. I'm like, oh, Lord, you're seeing me so many times today, man. You're seeing me so much, Lord. Woo. And I've learned to declare those things, the word of God. Yes. Stand on the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yes. One of the things also the Lord has been saying to me about America mm. is you've got a lot of fear. Americans, I think, the most scared people. Mm. I think the only other people would be the Indians in Kenya that are more scared than you guys. Because <laughs> the Indians in Kenya are really scared. Mm. They are always afraid and they can't get into public transport and everything. And they are terrified. Not all of them, but quite a number of them are so afraid of all these Africans that are mixed, you know, most of the time. The thing is, you guys have a lot of fear because of what you listen to. And the Lord is saying, you need to stop it. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this eavesdropping thing. I've been listening to your conversations as I admire your accents, you know, and try to figure them out so that I figure out how do I use my, my, my intonation and pronunciation so that you can understand what I'm saying, you know. <laughs> so I've been listening and quite a bit of fearful things. A lot of your conversations, and I don't know if you've noticed it, but I want to ask you to begin to pay attention. A lot of your conversations are laced with a lot of fear. Did you hear what happened? And you know, this and this happened. And you know, um, yeah, you know, she just got sick. And then this and this happened to her. And she just began, and then you know, I know, I know, it's just terrible, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> I, know, I know, right? right? Yeah, that just reminds it's just really, it's really crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're just in agreement, and you're believers. And I kept thinking, where is your redeemer, guys? Where is your redeemer? And earlier this week, I couldn't take it. Because one of the people that was doing it was, was a pastor. And I was like, I'm sorry, time up, time up. 
as you're talking about pens that give you cancer and everything, I'm like, time up, time up. Because part of the thing was, if I take that word back to Kenya, we are all dead. We are all, we are all feeling from aluminum. So apparently you guys have discovered that aluminum gives you cancer. And I'm like, God, Africans are sitting ducks. We are dead. Unless the Lord comes through for us. So I tell said, time up, time up, time up. And I said, what happened to Psalm 91? A thousand shall fall at your side. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand at your right hand side. Mm -hmm. I shall not come near me. Mm -hmm. Only with my eyes shall but I see the reward of the wicked. That's right. Yes. I will sleep and snow. I will sleep and I will snow. I will sleep and I will snow. Mm -hmm. I will not be fearing. <laughs> I'll not be thinking, oh, you know now, it's polythene bags. So if I use polythene bags, we're all going to get cancer. Because if we, you know, and everyone's trying to guess. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Cancer is a demon. Mm -hmm. that has no place yes. in a spirit filled vessel Amen. but if you let your guard down for a little bit it will jump in mm -hmm. and a lot of times cancer mm -hmm. comes through unforgiveness and bitterness yeah. mm -hmm. anger bitterness and forgiveness are the ingredients for cancer mm -hmm. so you're holding on to somebody that you're mad at and the bible says in Matthew 21 uh, 18 to 35 it says that if you do not forgive. Mm -hmm. You will be handed over to the tormentor. Mm -hmm. Not by Satan, by God. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? As in God serves you on a plate. It's pretty much the only time he does that. And he told me 28. And he hands you over himself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I think I have some oil and I hope I'm not spoiling this. But I was looking for a plate looking thing, you know. But he had, the Lord serves you to Lucifer on a plate. Mm -hmm. To torment you. And that's what sometimes cancer is. Sometimes it's also just a thing for you to learn something. Sometimes, by the way, it's also for you to birth a healing ministry. And it comes in the form of, and I'm talking sickness now, any kind of sickness. And, and it will come if you will not do what you're supposed to do. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to get on your knees and call on the Lord. Mm -hmm. We are called to pray. Mm -hmm. The Bible says men ought to always pray mm -hmm. and not to faint. If you don't pray, mm. these things are going to get your attention. Mm. So we need to just submit ourselves to the Lord mm. and pray and call on the Lord. You cannot be a Christian that does not pray. Yes. You cannot be a Christian that doesn't talk to God. Mm. You cannot be a Christian that doesn't have time to pray. Mm. You cannot. Mm. Various things will come mm. that will be used to get your attention. Mm. Some ministries are birthed as a result of disobedience. My ministry was birthed from disobedience. A lot of disobedience. You know, a lot of not hearing from the Lord. The Lord called me when I was 16 years old. But I spent 20 years of disobedience. Can you imagine that? 20 years. And, and I'm, you know, I'm saved and the Lord is using me. And I fast by day. I fast 21 days, 40 days and the glory of God would come upon me. And I lay hands on somebody and I feel like electricity is just jumping out of my hand and into somebody. And someone's thrown like a lightning bolt. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like Benny Hinge, oh yeah. I'm so annoyed. And you know, there's one thing that the Lord says he does not share. He says, I don't share my glory with any other. That's right. So I've had to learn so many lessons. And finally... In 2012, I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. I stopped running. I stopped the shenanigans. I stopped fighting. I stopped the drama. And then, of course, there was this time that, I would, you know, the Lord would do things. And I said, I'm so discouraged. I can't pray. And then some days I'll be like, God, I'm so mad at you. You're not fair. You're not right. I'm not going to be talking to you for a few days now. <laughs> and I think that God's feelings are so hurt and heaven has stopped because I stopped talking to him. You know? And some of us are like that. But we must learn to pray in and out of season. Yes. You're not going to punish God. You're going to punish yourself. Yes. And what's going to happen is that you're going to take a trip that takes, well, it took me how long, by the way? It took us 12 hours, yes, between Egypt and uh, the Jordan. Basically, it, yeah, it took 12 hours on the bus. So uh, if you're walking, apparently it takes seven days. <laughs> yeah, but they did 40 years. Because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And the trouble with disobedience is, if the Lord has mercy on you, he'll cause you to be struck by something that will wake you up. But if the Lord lets you be, you're actually going to end up in hell. You and your salvation. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot be disobedient and claim that you're born again. Who do you think is going to be calling Lord, the Lord, Lord, Lord? It's born again Christians. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think, seriously, do you think that someone who doesn't call the Lord, Lord, will suddenly on that day think, oh, let me, let me see, let me call you Lord. I have them calling you Lord. No. That's a day of trouble. On the day of trouble, you call him what you know him by. Yes. So if somebody calls him Lord, Lord, he says, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will enter heaven. Or I will tell them, go away, I do not know you, you wicked servant. Guess what? These are born again Christians. And guys, it's serious. And the first warning is, Jesus is coming back soon. Jesus. He's coming. He's coming. In 2013, he bought a little bit of time. And you can see all the movement in Gaza and in Israel and everything. I mean, seriously, guys. I like asking this question. Is there any single country? Not even the Soto. You know, not even the country you don't know nothing about. But is there any single country in this world where people have a meeting of presidents to decide whether you can call your capital city this and that and the other? Not one. So you've got to realize, even if you don't like Israel, you've got to realize there's something about that, that, that nation. That's right. And then what kind of, uh, you know, United Nations meets to have a discussion about Hamas that were killed at the border during, during peaceful protests, even though they're terrorists. As if even the Palestinians themselves say, majority of those that were killed were Hamas. And Lord have mercy, I mean, about nine people were killed, nine Palestinians were killed. But it's about 60 of those people. I think it was actually 61, were Hamas. They were terrorists. So that tells you, that tells you there was nothing innocent around the demonstrations around that place. But now they're having a discussion about whether to blow up KDF or not, or to destroy uh, Israel or not. And KDF is required to apologize for defending the borders of, of, of Israel. You know, the activity in Israel is one of the things that tells you something's going on. There was a while there, you wouldn't hear that much about them. But have you noticed that the pressure is increasing? The pressure is increasing and the hatred is increasing. And a lot of public relations things that are being done to cause people to hate Israel. And it's only now that they are learning finally, because this guy is banned. I mean, seriously, they were being killed for like five years during the Holocaust when this English guy went and said, hello, you've got to fight back. And then, oh, oh, we could do that, yeah? Rather than run away and try to, we could do that. Oh, we could fight, okay? And he says, okay, I'm a general in the British military, but I've come to teach you how to fight. And there's something about these guys that they don't think of fighting back. They're learning now how to fight back. I had the privilege of going to Israel, visiting Israel during their 70th anniversary. And um, I just blessed the Lord for what I saw. You know, you come from that nation and you know that God is a covenant God. Amen. Those guys shouldn't exist. They shouldn't be there. This, and first of all, by the way, their country is tinier than, I don't know, I don't think any of your states, you know, is anything like the size of Israel. Mm. Israel is tiny, tiny. And tonight, the Lord also wants you, I know, I know I've, I've moved a little bit away from the miracles and everything, but the Lord is asking me to minister a word that will stick. Amen. You see the trouble with sometimes laying hands on people and just declaring the glory of God, etc., is that we can have goosebumps and then go home and then be excited for about a month and then after that forget everything. <laughs> God is a covenant God. Yes. And what we're discussing tonight, all these things he's saying that I've come to do and I'm going to do and all that, mm. is purely him mm. being a covenant God. Amen. That's what he's doing. Mm. He said, I will heal you mm. by my stripes. Yes. You are healed. Amen. So why are you sick? Mm -hmm. And as a child of God, you've got to get to the place where you're like, God, you're a covenant God. Mm. I would like to understand why I'm sick. Mm. But then I got sick in Israel. Very, very sick in Israel. I got a terrible cold. And when we went to the Dead Sea, you know, I was like, so can I pick a drop from the Dead Sea and put it in my throat? Because that's a sore throat, and if the salt goes in there, somebody told me, don't you dare. But then, interesting enough, you know, God has a sense of humor. Mm. So I had a problem with one eye. And as I was lying there on the Dead Sea, you know, you've got to go to Israel. But then we organized in a trip there. So if you want to find out more, you can talk to Pastor Monica, and I'll let you know. We're going in May next year. Yeah, and it's just about $2,000 for everything other than your ticket there. So it's not much. So... 
you know, sat, sat inside the, the whatever, the, oh, and by then they love Americans, so you guys will get your way through. <laughs> so uh, I was told not to take Ethiopians. Some of my friends are Ethiopians. <laughs> yeah, but Americans, they love. So I got into the Dead Sea, and I sat down, you know. And by the way, you know, one of the things I was worried about was that my African hair was going to go funny. <laughs> um, because I didn't carry a, a, a shower cup or anything. And people kept saying, um, I, I didn't carry a swimming cup. And everybody kept saying, no, just get a shower cap. And I'm like, oh, man, you're so shady. I mean, I'm going, I'm going swimming. Why would I use a, a swimming cup? Do you mean a shower cap? You know, I mean, why would I use a shower cap? Do you mean a swimming cap? And I was feeling like, I really know. But you know what? When you sit there, it's like sitting on a couch. Your head doesn't even go back. Mm -hmm. So just sitting on the water, it was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then you know what happened? I panicked a little bit, so I like kicked one leg. And then <laughs> a drop of water hopped and jumped into one eye. <laughs> the eye that was having trouble. So for like two seconds, I had to minister to my spirit. Because my physical man was like, I'm dying! I'm dying! I'm blind! I'm burning! And we had been warned. <laughs> We had been told that this was what was going to happen. But one of the things God has trained me is to speak to my physical body. When it tries to speak a certain direction, mm -hmm. I minister to it through my spiritual man. Mm -hmm. And I make my spiritual man master. Mm -hmm. So in those seconds of excruciating pain, and when I was feeling like my eyes burning and there's not going to be anything left, I was asking the Holy Spirit, do you want me to go and wash this off? Or is this you? And he said, cool down, calm down. So I was counting down. I tried to open my eye. It gets worse. And I'm just ministering to myself, my spirit. And then all of a sudden, I opened my eyes. The Holy Spirit said, actually, open your eyes. I opened my eyes. And I could see those hills that they say surround Jerusalem, man. They were everywhere. My eyes were just cleared in the presence of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But I was left with a sore throat. So it continued. It persisted for a day. I normally won't do medicine. I've learned to really press in unless the Lord says, do medicine. I've learned that if I can't learn to war against a common cold, I'm not going to learn to war against something bigger that hits me. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in saying, no, it's just a cold. It's just a simply false. For me, I say even a pimple is not welcome on my body. <laughs> not welcome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was just asking the Lord, what is it, Lord? Normally when I speak to my, my throat, it's healed. Normally when I speak to my, my head, the headache goes, what is it, Lord? It's persisted for two days now. What is it, Lord? And the Lord said, stay behind today. So I stayed behind that day. And then the Lord said, sleep. So I slept. Of course, it did feel very spiritual. And every time I'd wake up and I'm like, oh, shakaya, da, 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 I love you, Jesus. would say, sleep. I'm like, is that you, Lord, or is that Satan? So I'll go back to sleep. And I kid you not, by 2 p.m., I was completely whole. Amen. Totally. And what the Lord told me is, you came from a 70-day fast, then you went and ministered in Asia, then you went and ministered in Australia, then you came right back and just did a few days in Kenya of ministry, and then you went into Israel, and you were exhausted. And the Lord was telling me, take care of this vessel. Amen. Yes. I'm here to tell you that healing is real. Amen. And the Lord keeps his word. Amen. And the Lord is faithful in everything. And guess what? Mm. By the way, I'm so determined to ensure that tonight, mm. by the time we're leaving, mm. I'm feeling such a violent faith inside of me mm. that not a single sick person will be here. Amen. Because wherever Jesus went, he healed the sick. Amen. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. Amen. And you came to the house of the Lord to receive from the Lord. Maybe some of you, I don't even know what brought you. You know, sometimes I'm tempted to get like uh, objectives or whatever expectations. But you know what? Your new expectation is to be made whole from your head to the soles of your feet. Amen. Completely whole. And if there's a sick person in your house, that as you get to that place, or as indeed you are to go and pray with them, they too will be healed. Because the glory of the Lord will be upon you. Amen. 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 If we can just spend some time praying for the, those who are not well, we can end the broadcast at this point. Mm -hmm. Just post it or something. Yeah. Press finish. Then yeah.